Mindhorn, which is um, basically a sort of uh, a, a spoof uh, detective story. So the idea is that back in the 1980s, there was a TV show called Mindhorn uh, starring this uh, actor, Richard Thorncroft. It's an 80s detective show that kind of takes a bit from Steve Austin and takes a little bit from Bergerac. He's a detective on an island, the Isle of Man. And... Um, he has been bionically altered so that he has an eye which can literally see the truth. And so it's, you know, an 80s throwback rubbish TV show. It hasn't got a talking car, but he's got an all-seeing eye, and it's one of the things... Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward to the future, uh, Richard Thorncroft is now a washed-up uh, actor, uh, played by Julian Barrett, and uh, nothing's happening. He's balding, he's paunching, he's now doing adverts for orthopaedic socks. Uh, it appears that everything has, uh, everything in his career has dried up, and he is basically taking any auditions that go, no matter what they are. Here is a clip. I speak the truth. I am afeard of no man. I am afeard of no creature. I am my own man. I am Clifton of Port Antonio. Do you feel me? Yeah, that's incredible. That's, that's literally incredible. <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Really, I mean, I don't know what to say, but thank you. Well, acting aside, it's been great to catch up. <laughs> Kenny B. <laughs> this guy's one crazy hombre back in the day. Do you remember that hotel in Maidstone? Oh, who can, who, can, who can forget that? We did a tour of the Medway Basin. Thank you. And this fella, <laughs> well, they'll have to repay for that hotel room. <laughs> yeah. I love what you're doing these days. Ken, I really admire your balls. Okay, the Bee Man. Already. The Killer Bee. The Brown Plane. Who is that? Not. That is, of course, uh, Kenneth Chuckles Branner playing himself, along with si uh, Simon uh, Chuckles Callow, who also plays himself, um, and a couple of other cameos. So the story is he, his career is completely washed up. Then he gets a, uh, a phone call from the police in the Isle of Man. They have a suspected serial killer who will speak only to Mindhorn, believes that Mindhorn is a real character. So he said, they, they say, can you come and talk to him on the phone in character? He then sees this as a career-reviving opportunity. You know, TV cop helps, helps real-life cops solve crime and thinks that somehow it will be a fantastic publicity opportunity. So he has to go back into character back to the Isle of Man, back to his old stomping ground, where all these sort of ghosts of the past are around. The woman who, with whom he used to co-star, brilliantly played by Essie Davis, is now together with his former stuntman, who has one of those sort of smoking a pancake Dutch accents that you remember from Austin Powers. Um, Steve Coogan is a character who was in uh, his show, who had a spin-off series called Windjammer, and has now become very, very successful and runs a club called Jammers. And it's that kind of it's that comedy of the failing British actor who desperately wants to be taken. So there's an awful lot of Alan Partridge in it. There's an awful lot of uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place in it. There's an awful lot of that, you know, John Cleese comedy of embarrassment, the, 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 the fear of humiliation uh, and shame. Um, it begins very, very well, and it ends very, very well. It ends with this fantastic soft rock ballad about you can't hank off the wind, which is, you know, which really made me laugh out loud. It's filmed in the Isle of Man, but surprisingly for a film made in the Isle of Man, it's set in the Isle of Man. Because usually when the Isle of Man is in films, it's playing other things. So it's playing Cornwall in Stormbreaker or it's playing Ireland in Waking Ned or it's playing New York in the 30s in Me and Orson Welles. But you really have to go, I mean, you know, you start thinking about films like no limit uh, for it to be a film, you know, set in and <clears throat> on the Isle of Man. And so obviously, for me, I'm going, oh, you know, there's Laxey Will, that's really lovely. And look, there's Douglas Prom, that's really lovely because I have a real fondness for the island anyway. Really? But I, you must have. I've, no, I've never mentioned it before. But it's one of those things in which uh, the weaknesses of it are that it does feel a little bit like a 30 minute television sketch stretched out over a 90 minute movie, which is kind of inevitable. Uh, on the other hand, when the jokes land, they are properly funny. There is just enough in the TV series, in the idea of the TV series, that you can just about imagine that it might have existed. Because if you remember 1980s television, if you're of a certain age, you're pulling that face which says that you are of that certain age. I'm mean, pulling the face that says I was on it, 1980s television. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. But not in those shows. <laughs> Yes, OK, well, it might therefore be too much of a toe curling. I could experience. show you some Best of Magic from ITV. Best of Magic? Best of Magic. Is that a show that you presented? I was one of the presenters. And did you present the Best of Magic? I mean, did, did, was it literally what it sounds like? It was. So yeah. what did you do? You go like, here is somebody doing Soaring Here's the Lady. Here's someone doing magic. Da -da -da. Did you have a, Did you have like a television suit that you wore for it? Well, 
Yes, I suppose, in as much as there was a clothing budget. Yeah. So yes. you bought so you bought clothes in order to wear for the television yes. for the for the thing. Yeah. Do you still have it? No. No, you no. don't slip into it later than no, night. No, that looks no. remarkably like the stuff you wear. I don't on think a daily it looks basis. anything like this, actually, Simon. I don't think you've ever you've ever been quite as well dressed as I mm. am right now this second. No, anyway, on, on TV could, in the eighties. Okay, if before we drift off into utterly into the realms of nostalgia. So anyway, uh so in the case of Mindhorn, it is funny. It is sporadically hilarious. It is somewhat, you know, uh uh, sort of messy around the edges and there are longueurs in it but generally I laughed you know I passed the six laughs test easily and I did enjoy it and there are moments in it in which it is you know quite effectively toe curling my as my reservation is that it does feel like the format is too long to entirely sustain the idea and we have seen this idea done before in you know other areas but it's done well and with a certain degree of gusto and the Isle of Man can take the jokes about the Isle of Man on the chin they long they 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 have done you know, a lot and they will continue to do so. So generally, with some reservations, it's a thumbs up.